Anna is from Nigeria, and she says, does God condemn people of the LGBTQ? Well, she wrote it LGNTQ. I, I hope uh, what she's referring to LGBT. Okay. Well, I think some say N now. Um, also, if a transsexual person gives his or her life to Christ, can he or she go to heaven without transitioning back to their original gender? All right. So let me start with you. Thank you, sir, for, first of all, the privilege of being here with you again. It, it's always a great privilege. I'm so grateful, sir, for the opportunity. First of all, the question about God condemning um, people. He, he doesn't condemn people at all. In fact, the Bible says that God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, that's in John chapter 3, verse 15, but that the world through him might be saved. So he loves people. And he came for people that had missed their way, like these people. And he loves them. He loved them enough to die for them. And so the question of condemnation doesn't arise at all. He doesn't condemn. And if a transsexual person genuinely gives his life to Christ, Let's give an example. Maybe he doesn't have the resources to do another operation, <laughs> but he's genuinely saved. God is not going to look at that body. He's going to look at the heart. In First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Bible says, God does not look on the outward appearance, but looks on the heart. But if the person has the ability to return to what um, he was or she was before, and the person decides to do that, that's beautiful. But I, I believe that as far as the heart, he is truly saved and has the willingness to do what is right. God, God sees the heart. The Bible says he's the one that judges the thoughts and intents of a man's heart. God knows the one that is truly repentant and is truly saved and that really wants to do the will of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Pastor, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on set again today. And happy Easter. Thank you. Um, Pastor, I would agree with uh, Pastor Mecca in that um, it, it cannot be an absolute that the person will not go to heaven because if, for example, the person was on the deathbed or the rapture took place at that moment, um, we wouldn't be talking about waiting for the person to go and do an operation. But it depends on why the person hasn't done it, if there is any such reason, uh, because God looks at heart. And the Bible tells us that we should walk in the light. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light, will be just fine as at what we know at that time. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I think those are beautiful answers. I will add something to that um, as we get along. I think there's, there's one other question that has something close to this, which, but if you, just in case you want to know um, whether there's anything wrong with the uh, LGBTQ or LGNTQ, as far as the Bible is concerned, certainly. Um, in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 I just want to read Bible to you what the scripture says let's read from the Amplified translation and um, it says do you not know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God do not be deceived misled neither the impure and immoral nor idolaters nor adulterers nor those who participate in homosexuality nor cheats swindlers and thieves I, I want 
think, look at the, look at the company. Look at the list where you have those who practice homosexuality. Look at the list. Is that such a wonderful list? Now, this is the Bible. It's not, I'm not reading you an opinion. This is what the Bible says. We're not discussing human opinions. So, I read that again. Do you not know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, misled. Neither the impure and immoral, nor idolaters, nor adorers, nor those who practice or participate in homosexuality, nor cheats, swindlers, and thieves, nor greedy graspers, nor drunkards, nor foul mouthed revilers and slanderers, nor extortioners, and others will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. This is what the word says. And so, what God calls on all those who practice these things to do is that they turn from them and receive salvation. Now, let me read you another portion, just in case you're thinking, oh, is that all? There's more. In fact, the teaching of God's word is consistent from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. Now look at Romans chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 26 to verse 27. Let's read again from the Amplified Translation. For this reason, God gave them over and abandoned them to vile affections and degrading passions. For the women exchanged their natural function for an unnatural and abnormal one. And then he says, and the men. Just a second, or no? Yeah. And the men also turned from natural relations with women and were set ablaze, burning out, consumed with lust for one another, men committing shameful acts with men and suffering in their own bodies and personalities the inevitable consequences and penalty of their wrongdoing and going astray, which was their fitting retribution. Now, this is what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. What the Bible says, this is the truth of the Word of God. Now, according to the Bible, no one was born a thief. I want you to look at that list again. No one was born a thief. No one was born an idolater. No one was born an adulterer. No one was born a swindler. No one was born foul-mouthed. I'm, I'm talking about the list that we just read. No one was born a drunkard. No one was born with any of those characteristics, you had to acquire them. You had to learn them. You had to be tempted to become that way. No one was born that way. So in the same vein, as you look at that list, no one was born a homosexual. Let no man deceive you. The Bible already told you, it says, do not, it's right on the screen there. Do not be deceived. Do not be misled. Well, in a day in which people are misleading others, and they're not teaching the truth of the gospel, the truth of the word of God. And that's why many want to get rid of the Bible. They want to get rid of the Bible because this is one book, the most powerful book in all the world and speaks very clearly 
about man's life and man's character, man's behavior, and about God and what God demands of us. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. And don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. You may get as much teaching as you want from everywhere to try to tell you that it's okay. But if you look at the scripture, it's not okay. Don't deceive yourself. Now, as for um, the second part of the question, I said as we get along, I, I'm, I'm going to show you something from the Word, and you can decide whether you really want to serve God or not. All right, here's another question. Isaac from Nigeria. He says, good day, sir. Thank you for this privilege. What are we to do as Christians when the organization we work for mandates and stresses the compulsory need for all their staff to be vaccinated against COVID-19? My office has mandated the compulsory vaccination of COVID-19, as there wouldn't be any pay whatsoever. What can I do, sir? I need this job. Good question. But it's very simple. 